I'm Matt Guichard. This is No Holds Barred. In this episode, we're going to talk about burglary. There are several kinds of burglaries, and we're going to talk about residential burglaries, commercial burglaries. When I talk about residential burglaries, we often, uh, in the penal code, refer to it as a first-degree burglary. And what is that? Well, in law school, you essentially hear it as entering of the dwelling place of another, and it used to be at night, but now it can be at any time. So entry of the dwelling place of another, uh, uh, sometimes breaking and entering. So people often say, well, OK, what is that? Well. I call it the inherently dangerous or death-saturated situation. That is somebody breaking into somebody's residence, and you can oftentimes expect that there would be somebody present, and then nothing good can come from that. In fact, residential burglaries uh, can lead to the felony murder rule and also uh, lead to the death penalty because a killing during the commission of a first-degree burglary. So, why do we talk about first-degree burglaries? Well, it's a residence, and you might expect people to be there. Let's talk about second-degree burglary or commercial burglaries, and that's breaking into a business. So you often think that somebody climbs up in the roof of a business at night and goes down through the skylight and robs, what, the bank or the store or whatever. Um, that can certainly be uh, described as a commercial burglary. Now, there are burglaries oftentimes that individuals commit uh, during the course of what we might call a, uh, a petty theft. It's really a commercial burglary. And what is that? That is the entry of that commercial business, and it could be at any time, but let's say during the daytime, with a booster bag. That what we used to call as people would have a booster bag between their legs. Say women would wear a skirt and have a bag between their legs, or even a bag that says Nordstrom's on it, and they're going into to Nordstrom's, uh, and they put things in it. What you need to prove to make it a burglary rather than just a theft is the entry with the intent. So burglary, entry with the intent to commit theft or any other felony. So if you entered a store with the intent to uh, commit an assault with a deadly weapon on a person you don't like, but you know they work there, that can be a burglary, in addition to the assault, if in fact you affected the assault. So the entry is important. What was that person thinking when they entered the store to steal? And that's a commercial burglary. So burglaries can be first degree or second degree. They can be uh, felonies. They can be misdemeanors. But important for people to understand that if they've entered a store with it, it, it intent to uh, commit a theft or other felony. That can be a felony, and that is a burglary. Even though they said, no, I was, just go <laughs> I was just going in to steal some meat from that Safeway store. I, I didn't, yeah, but you brought a bag in, you planned it all out ahead of time, and you entered with it. The more dangerous one, and the one that uh, can get you a, certainly a state prison commitment, is that first degree burglary, that, that dwelling house, and as we we think about somebody saying, I've been robbed uh, when they come home from work and their house has been broken into. Well, they haven't been robbed. Uh, they've been burglarized. If they're in the house and somebody enters and there's a confrontation, uh, it can be a robbery rather than a burglary. But in most cases, we think about uh, somebody breaking into your house when you're not home. Uh, and we see an awful lot of it nowadays. And people uh, knocking on front doors. If somebody doesn't answer, they go around the back and they break in. If somebody answers, they say, I'm looking for somebody, or would you like your grass cut, or, or whatever. And all of those we think about uh, as burglaries and very dangerous. And I want to get back to that point. There are a number of circumstances, we call it in special circumstances murder cases. And a special circumstance murder case is a case in which someone can, in fact, get the death penalty or life without possibility of parole. And a burglary is something that can rise to the level of a special circumstance and get somebody 
the death penalty. And how would that happen? Well, I had a number of cases where somebody broke into a house, believing at nighttime, believing that nobody was there, uh, but somebody in fact was there. Uh, there was a confrontation. Uh, the homeowner was killed during that confrontation. Uh, the burglar got away, but guess what? He's now a murderer. He is a murderer. Uh, it can be the felony murder rule, a murder during the commission of a burglary, or even rise to the level of, uh, of the death penalty. So very, very serious offenses in every state, and certainly in the state of California. Um, First-degree burglary is, is uh, one of the very top crimes that we want to dissuade people from engaging in because it has incredibly serious consequences. So what I really want to point out is that the, the difference between a residential and a commercial burglary is really the danger. Uh, and the danger then results in uh, greater enhancements for sentencing. So it really comes down to uh, much harsher sentencing for first-degree residential burglary than um, run-of-the-mill commercial burglary, somebody breaking into a, a building. And you can see why, that uh, society is discouraging people from breaking into people's houses, and the result can be they go to state prison for that offense. Commercial burglary uh, can be probation uh, or even lesser time in, uh, in custody. Now I'd like to talk about a couple of examples just to let you know how these things work. So we think of a city like San Francisco where a number of people are breaking into cars. Interesting, if the car is locked, it's an auto burglary. And uh, the window is broken into and property is taken, that's an auto burglary, it's locked. But if the car is not locked, it's just in some cases, a petty theft of property from the vehicle. When we think about uh, first-degree burglaries, I had a case in which uh, a neighbor broke into the house of an elderly person, didn't realize that she was there. She confronted him, and he killed her. And in that case, that first-degree burglary case, that became a special circumstances murder case. That person now sits on death row in San Quentin. We think of commercial burglaries. I don't know if you recall, a number of years ago, there were Safeway break-ins. They were uh, actually turned into be robberies because there was, uh, in, in almost all of the cases, there was a Safeway employee in the store at night when the store was closed. Uh, the burglars broke in not realizing that. What did they do? They broke in with the intent to commit a theft. And in effect, they tied up the uh, security person at the store and left. That burglary became a robbery. Uh, and ultimately, uh, they were caught. And they were people that, believe it or not, were doing security for Safeway in other areas of the state. And they just figured out uh, how to do it from an inside, uh, uh, how they could do it easily because they knew how the whole system worked. So that's a commercial burglary that turned into a robbery. The kind of standard we think about is the person going into the store and stealing candy bars and going out and there's a confrontation out in the street. That turned into a robbery, but the initial one was a burglary. They entered with the intent into that convenience store to commit theft. That's a commercial burglary. Now, if they got into the store and they decided, uh, and they bought a soda and decided that, ah, while I'm here, I'm going to steal some candy bars. Uh, well, we couldn't prove then beyond a reasonable doubt that they entered with the intent to commit theft. They actually entered uh, to buy a soda and stole some candy bars, and that just turns into a petty theft. An interesting case that I had uh, some years ago when I was uh, a young DA was a couple entered a store, uh, the the husband of this team had a long history of thefts, and the store knew it, so they watched him very carefully. Well, he went around the store, he got a bunch of meat from the meat market, went down an aisle, and slid the meat, the steaks, into something in the cereal aisle, and then he went out the store. He didn't take anything with him. 
but his mate, as all part of this, uh, went in the store with a basket up and down, uh, got the steaks, put them into her purse, and bought some uh, tortillas, actually, uh, and went up to the counter, paid for the tortillas, and went out, was confronted in the parking lot. What is that? That is a burglary on the part of both of them. They entered with the intent to commit theft. He actually put it there, so as part of this whole plan was to commit this burglary and steal these uh, stakes. I tried that case as a young DA. I actually lost it because the jury felt that, well, they were hungry and this was just food and they kind of did what we call jury nullification. But that was a burglary. That's precisely what it was. That's kind of the difference in uh, burglaries, robberies, first degree burglaries, commercial burglaries. A more frequent phenomenon that we see now and very troubling is the smash and grabs where a number of people uh, enter a store very quickly, smash and grab and run. So in Walnut Creek, California, we had uh, the famous Nordstrom's where a number of people pulled up in their vehicles right in front. They had blocked their license plates front and back and in some cases taken them off. They ran in. Uh, the entire event lasted less than a minute in the store, smashing and grabbing a number of things back into their cars and out of town. What kind of a crime is that when we look at, I want to say, old school burglaries? Well, clearly it's a burglary. They entered with the intent to commit theft. We have some new statutes that enhance uh, the penalties for doing that, but that's a burglary. And the smash and grab burglaries is exactly uh, what is referred to. And that wraps it up for our discussion of burglaries. If you enjoyed this episode, please hit the like button and hit the subscribe button. It really helps us with the YouTube algorithms. See you next time on No Holds Barred.